to October, which means, of course, the stores are already loading up with all the Christmas season goodies and everything. I'm already in full Ebenezer Scrooge mode. It's just, it's not a holiday. It's not a celebration. It's just another marketing gimmick. And I experienced a true European Christmas many years ago, and that spoiled me for the American version And uh, ever since. And I really, I can't get into Christmas. I can't get into the trees. I can't get into all of that stuff, uh, especially while we're bombing the people you see in those nativity sets for their oil. And I just, I cannot get enthusiastic about it right now. It's just another, you know, let's pretend that we're still, you know, a a culture and a society here by buying stuff at the store uh, on credit here. All right, the phone lines are open, 800-313-9443, 800-313-9443. Mike is in the control room today. Crystal's having the day off. And he's ready to answer your calls when you call on in. And a reminder, RBN is still in their fundraiser. They're needing to raise money for new equipment to replace the old equipment, which is failing as soon as the warranties are are, are coming out. So please go over to republicbroadcasting.org. They have a PayPal button there. They also have an online store where you can buy some pretty nifty items. We're going to be talking about shortwave radio receivers a little later in the week, things you should look for, because in the event something should happen to the blogosphere, those short waves are going to become very important and a reminder that the RBN uh, programming will be available on short wave imminently I don't have the official start date yet but we're going to be broadcasting on short wave so if the internet should be interfered with in the name of national security you'll still be able to get our programming out uh, from those short wave radios and I know short waves sort of faded from uh, from fashion <clears throat> when the internet came along but it's really a good thing to have uh, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later in the week. You can also call Republic Broadcasting at 800-724-2719 and uh, arrange for your support that way. And we really do need your help. We don't have big corporate sponsors. We don't have anonymous government uh, funding agencies paying our bills here because they don't like it when we tell the truth on them. And all the big money is going to the liars right now. And people who are trying to get the truth out, we need your help. We need the little money to help us fight the big money, and that is you. Now, I want to talk uh, at the start of this show about Iran and red lines, because with Netanyahu's utter failure at the United Nations to convince the world that Iran is an imminent nuclear threat, I mean, they've only been saying it for 33 years, Iran will have the bomb in six months. 30 years it's been going on, this same thing, and it hasn't happened yet. And so the credibility of the Iranian nuclear threat is very much on the wane. Netanyahu's credibility uh, has been trashed with it. We're already seeing more and more indications of how uh, even AIPAC's influence in our political structure has been damaged by this humiliating debacle at the United Nations. But the war with Iran is still desired by a, a very great number of parties and you need to remember that issues of Israel and keeping them happy aside the main reason for the United States government to want to invade Iran is to complete their plan for what I call the dollarification of the OPEC oil producing nations and by that I mean to basically invade or regime change or somehow convince all of the Arab oil producing nations actually all the oil producing nations, including Venezuela, to go back to only accepting dollars for their oil in order to prop up the dollar internationally. That's the real top agenda here. They don't want you to know about that. They're trying to sell you this war with, you know, evil Iranian terrorists and evil Iranian nuclear bombs and evil Iranian whatever it is they're going to sell you next week on this situation. When we come back from the commercial break, I'm going to go into this in a little bit more detail because all of a sudden... The U.S. government has a real problem on how they're going to sell you this next war. We'll be right back. Iran, and we all know the idea that Iran is some kind of a threat to the United States. Uh, It's complete nonsense. They're not in the habit of starting wars. They haven't started a war in over 200 years. They are not belligerent. They are not a threat, period, end of discussion. Now, placating Israel aside... There are two motives for the U.S. to want to invade Iran. The first one is what might politely be termed a point of honor. The CIA overthrew the democratically elected government of Iran back in 1953, 
and imposed the Shah of Iran on the people of Iran uh, in order that the Shah would guarantee uh, access to Iran's oil at below market rates, selling out the resources of the people of Iran to United States and British oil companies at below market rates in order to maximize profits. Now, in 1979, the people of Iran finally got fed up with this U.S. puppet regime, and they kicked out the Shah, and they created a whole new government. And the United States is still very angry about that, because once you're conquered by the American empire, once you're a province, once you're a puppet state, you can't be allowed to break free. It might give those other provinces uppity ideas that they could break free and once that gets started who knows what's going to go on so there's uh, definitely a political agenda to reconquer iran impose a new shah-like government and return to the good old days of of unending access to cheap iranian oil that's one agenda the other one is actually a little bit more pressing and goes back to the Bretton woods agreement at the end of World War II that made the dollar the international trade currency. Now the United States when they set up Bretton Wood they promised they would not overprint dollars to shift the world economy into American pockets and they linked the dollar to gold, $35 per ounce. Now of course as soon as everybody signed on to Bretton Woods uh, the US immediately broke their promise and started overprinting the dollar and by, because of Bretton Woods, foreign nations were required to take these dollars. They were as good as gold. And it resulted in a period of unparalleled wealth for the United States of America. It was sort of America's imperial tax on the rest of the world, done in a very kind of clever, covert way. Now, soon there were so many paper dollars floating around that people began to realize they could not all be redeemed for gold. And during the Nixon administration, France said, we've got a big pile of these paper dollars that have piled up here in France because we're making and selling products that people want. And we'd like to convert some of it back to the gold and bring the gold home uh, to France. And Richard Nixon said, I don't think so, because it turned out France's uh, stockpile of paper dollars exceeded the American gold supply to cover it. So Nixon slammed the gold window shut and ended convertibility. And he went on TV saying, this is for the good of the American nation. It's protecting our strategic... The usual song and dance that you get when the United States breaks a treaty obligation. So, after that, of course, the, when the convertibility of the U.S. dollar to gold was ended, the U.S. went right on printing more and more dollars, and people were less and less inclined to use them. So in order to preserve international demand for dollars, to prop them up, the United States pulled this little protection racket. They had already given Israel all these weapons and arms, and Israel's constantly invading their neighbors and uh, carrying out attacks on, on their neighbors like you know, Egypt and so forth and so on. So the United States made this little protection racket deal with the OPEC oil producing nations. They went to these nations and said, if you will agree to only sell your oil for US dollars, we will protect you. And the OPEC nations basically signed up for that. And that linkage to the oil trade is the only thing still propping up the value of the dollar internationally. They, they call it the petrodollar. Okay, and are we still on the air here? Because I'm getting internet things. You're up. Yeah, we're up. Okay, fine. Uh, I'm getting messages that my internet uh, connection is going flaky here, so pardon me for taking a moment. So anyway, the U.S. told all these opaque oil nations, we will protect you from, well, Israel, as long as you sell your oil for dollars. But over time, more and more nations, as the dollar declined, they wanted to sell their oil for other currencies. And the United Nations gave Iraq permission in 2000, I think it was, for Iraq to sell their oil for euros. And at that point, it became a foregone conclusion, Iraq was going to be invaded in order to force their oil sales back onto the dollar. And in the aftermath of the Iraq war, even though U.S. oil companies didn't get many of the franchises, every franchise in Iraq is having to uh, sell their oil for dollars in order to prop up the value of the dollar. That's what this is all about, propping up the dollars. So... 
now we have this situation where more and more nations are saying we want to sell our oil for other currencies because we can't trust the dollar any longer and so the united states has an agenda of what i call dollarification of the o arab oil pet um, <clears throat> the arab opec oil producing nations step by step each oil producing nation has either been outright invaded or there's been a covert coup d'etat in order to put in a government that will agree to sell that country's oil for dollars and only for dollars and so that's basically where that all came from and this leaves us in a situation they need to go into Iran because Iran is selling their oil for currencies other than the dollar and as more and more nations break away from the dollar the dollar is on the verge of collapse there is nothing supporting the value of the dollar other than its linkage to the oil traffic. The United States doesn't manufacture anything people want to buy in any quantity. Uh, we're a net importer of food now, and more and more nations are starting to say, we don't want your GMO corn. And that is a major loss of imports. And without uh, uh, exports, without exports, there's nothing propping up the value of the dollar. And so the United States still needs to go into Iran to force them back into only selling oil for the dollar to prop it up. Now this leaves the US government with a major problem. How are they going to sell this war to a very war weary and bankrupted American people? They're not going to come out here and say we want you to risk having your children uh, crippled and killed uh, to prop up the dollar to make Wall Street and the Federal Reserve happy. That is the major agenda. That's the real reason for this continued belligerence against Iran and other countries. We're going to be talking about Venezuela a little bit later. But no parent is going to sit there and say, yes, let our child sign up and enlist in the army to go out and preserve the dollar in the world. Nobody's going to go along with that reason. Now, the, the claim that Iran is a nuclear threat to the United States has not gained any traction, mostly because we all remember that whopper they told us about Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction. And this idea that uh, Iran, we have to save Iran from a tyrant over there is not going to fly because they tried that back in 2009 with this coup d'etat to try and put the son of the Shah back on the throne. It's been too soon. People aren't going to say that, oh, the, the people that stood with Ahmadinejad and their government in 2009, all of a sudden they've changed their mind. Nobody's going to buy that one. And so... Once again, we're back to this idea of some kind of a false flag attack to portray Iran as a terror-sponsoring nation. There was a story we linked to whatreallyhappened.com where this Iranian CIA agent is saying, oh yes, we have it on good authority, Iran is planning something terrible against America. We've seen that time and time and time again. Now the most likely false flag, we mentioned it last week and I want to mention it again. We are seeing, even today, all these news stories about how these hackers from the Mideast, and we only know they're from the Mideast because they posted a message saying, hi, we're Mideastern hackers, be angry with us, and they're uh, attacking U.S. banks. Now, they're attacking them with denial-of-service attacks, which is a great way to attract attention. That's the only reason for a denial-of-service attack. You're not going to get in, you're not going to steal any money. People who are hacking banks in order to achieve a financial gain try and do it in a way that is not noticed so that they don't have the law enforcement coming after them. The fact that these are denial-of-service attacks to try and jam the ATMs means it's just to attract attention and to make ordinary uh, Americans feel directly affected by it when they go to their ATMs and they can't get their money out. And so I would say that probably sometime right after the November elections, because they're in a race against the collapse of the American financial system, and crashing it and blaming the Iranians for it allows Wall Street and Washington, D.C. to get to duck the blame for the Ponzi scheme Federal Reserve, for the mortgage-backed security fraud, for deregulation, for rampant fraud and criminality. Oh no, it wasn't that. This was an act of war by those gosh darned Iranians out there. And so it looks, the more I think about it, the more and more it looks to me like we're being set up for a new 9-11, a virtual 9-11. We know that one of these so-called cyber weapons that are being reported, Stuxnet, Dooku, Flame, the most recent one called Gauss is specifically designed to target banking systems. It's already been tried on the banks in Lebanon. And so I think the new 9-11, more than likely, uh, is going to be 
an attack on the computers of America's financial system to crash the system.